All right, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why there's nothing really interesting about um, leaks and stuff about big Navi performance and sort of take you through why I think the performance numbers are really quite set in stone at this point. I'm going to take three different angles on this. We're going to look at the Ampere pricing structure and um, see where a big Navi card would slot up in there. We're going to look at the memory bandwidth uh, comparisons between the different cards and then we're going to just look at the performance relative to the 5700 XT based on uh, CU count and you'd be quite surprised at how um, close all these three methods end up um, with each other in terms of you know they produce a similar result so let's start with the pricing um, here I've got the prices for the RTX 3000 series uh, up and as we see, we have the quite big pricing gap between the 3080 and the 3090. And here I've got some performance estimates. These are, I think they're a bit ambitious. Um, they could be lower, they could be higher. But the point is that we see a, probably is going to be a similar price, uh, sorry, a similar performance gap between the uh, 3080 and the 3090 as we have between the 3070 and the 3080. But going up from the 3070 to the 3080, you only spend 40% more, while you spend a double the price to get to a 3090. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that NVIDIA is not really expecting any competition to the 3090, and that the 3080 is expecting competition along with the 3070. So the logical thing is then to say, well, the 3080 and uh, the 3080 is going to be the main competition for big Navi and the 3090 should be well clear of it. Um, and I've been saying this basically since I saw the prices on the Nvidia reveal that we should expect big Navi to end up um, end, above, end up just above the 3080 or uh, competing directly with the 3080. So let's look then at uh, the memory bandwidth. So uh, top RDNA 2 card I'd expect almost certainly to be a 384-bit card. 512-bit um, is just a disgusting mess. The PCBs end up uh, stupidly overcomplicated, and you already have to do a lot of uh, work with GDDR6 to, to manage the absurdly high data rates uh, that you need on the data bus. So I'd expect 384 bits and then 16 to 18 gigabit per second uh, on each lane. So that would put us th with a bandwidth of uh, here 780, uh, 768 to 864 gigabytes per second. And where do we see this lines up in the RTX, uh, against the RTX card? Well, it lines up right in between the 3080 and the 3070, I mean the 3080 and the 3090. Let's have a look at the bandwidth efficiency. Well, obviously we might say that um, certain cards will be more efficient at using their bandwidth than others. We've seen this in the past where Nvidia managed to get pretty big uh, performance advantages over uh, over AMD cards despite having less uh, less memory bandwidth. Well, if we look at the 5700 XT versus the Turing lineup, we see that uh, for the same bandwidth cards, so the uh, the TU 104 based cards at 488 gigabytes per second. We can see, uh, I've got the numbers from Tech Power Up and Hardware Unboxed here, and they show a pretty similar story. The, uh, the you know, the, the reviews all generally show around these numbers. And we see that relative to the 5700 XT, we can get maybe 15% performance for, for the given memory bandwidth. So we say, well, the memory bandwidth efficiency, so the performance we get per bandwidth between these two architectures is relatively close, it favors Turing, but it's not, they're not that far apart. And I think we can make the same assumption for RDNA 2 versus Ampere. RDNA 2 should be relatively close, but again, probably will favor NVIDIA slightly. The best case we have uh, for a big Navi at 384-bit uh, with, um, with 18 gigabit per second GDDR6, we'd sit closer to a 3090 than a 3080 in terms of bandwidth. Uh, the 864 
gigabyte per second here, it's pretty close to the 3090. But obviously if we said that, well, we're not going to go the full way to 18 gigs uh, for the GDR6, we're going to sit at 16, then it's going to be a smaller number here, uh, closer to the 3080. And in the worst case, we actually might end up with uh, less performance than the 3080. HBM is of course always an open question, but uh, I don't really expect HBM cards to be competing with the 3080. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point AMD throws in some, you know, Radeon 7 like premium card um, way up the top end, something like 32 gigs of HBM 2E or something like that. That probably could be to 3090, but I mean, there's no real indication of that that exists anyway at the moment, and given that we can get to these bandwidth figures with GDR. Uh, GDR6. I don't really think that AMD is really incentivized to use HBM, especially not to compete in the price bracket under one thousand dollars. And lastly, we can look at the performance based on uh, based on Navi 10. Navi 10 at uh, 40 CUs would be 2560 shader processors. Big Navi, assuming we get 80 CUs, we'd have double that, so 5K shader processors. We look at the performance numbers, the NVIDIA claims the RTX 3090 is 50%. We saw earlier, where was it, here, or was it here? Um, we see the SP count and bandwidth are actually up a little bit more, um, more than 50% for the 3070, and we assume the 3070 of course is around the same ballpark as the, 38, uh, sorry, the 2080 Ti. Um, but say 50%, if we normalize that to the 5700 XT, uh, we get the 210% for the 3090 over the 5700 XT. If we went with that more ambitious 60% uh, figure of the 3090 over the th uh, 2080 Ti, then we end up with 224%. If we went with a smaller number, you, you get the point, it ends up in roughly the same ballpark. So anyway, big Navi. Doubles Navi 10 performance. We could say account for the same. Uh, we have to account, of course, for the clock speed difference. So sure, we might have double CUs, but we might end up power limits. Uh, we might um, end up limited in terms of power. The reports at the moment are that Audion A2 isn't particularly power hungry, at least not to the same extent as Ampere is. But of course this goes the other way as well, we might have improvements like we had in Vega, uh, sorry, on Vega and Renoir, Renoir chips, and we might end up with much higher clocks possible within the same power envelope. We also have to consider that the scaling is not perfect, um, there are probably some architectural improvements on Big Navi, uh, or on RDNA2. But of course we can also tie that into the memory bandwidth figures we looked earlier, so 5700 XT sits at uh, 448, so uh, 18 gigabit per second of uh, GDR6 would put us up to roughly double that. The slower figures, you know, it depends, we can consider the bandwidth efficiency might change. But it puts you in the same ballpark anyway, so you know, you say 1.8 to 2x the performance. And there you have it. You're again sitting between the 3080 and the 3090. So I think it's pretty obvious where uh, Big Navi is going to land. It's going to land between the 3080 and the 3090, and I don't think really there's any point in people making clickbait videos about it anymore. So. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.